Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Mastering the skills of critical appraisal needs an in-depth understanding of various types of medical research, with a focus on some of the most impactful types, meta-analyses, systematic reviews, and real-world evidence. In this tutorial, we will guide you through these critical areas in two main parts. The first part will focus on handling the critical appraisal of systematic reviews, meta-analyses, and real-world evidence, providing you with practical approaches to evaluate each. The second part will offer a detailed comparison of these three types of research, highlighting their differences, strengths, and applications. So, let's get started. Now, systematic reviews and meta-analyses are high-level study designs that synthesize evidence from multiple studies to provide a comprehensive assessment of a research question. These studies are at the top of the evidence hierarchy due to their rigorous methodology and ability to integrate findings from diverse sources. Systematic reviews follow a predefined protocol to identify, assess, and synthesize all relevant studies on a specific topic. The process includes a thorough literature search, inclusion-exclusion criteria, and quality assessment of the included studies. A meta-analysis is a statistical technique used to combine the results of multiple studies into a single quantitative estimate of the overall effect. Meta-analyses are often conducted as part of a systematic review, but can also be performed independently. Conducting a systematic review involves several key steps. Search strategy. Develop a comprehensive search strategy that includes multiple databases and sources of gray literature to ensure that all relevant studies are identified. The search strategy should be transparent and replicable. Inclusion, exclusion criteria. Define clear criteria for including or excluding studies based on the research question, study design, population, intervention, and outcomes. This step is crucial for maintaining the review's focus and ensuring that the included studies are relevant. Bias assessment. Assess the risk of bias in the included studies using standardized tools, such as the Cochrane Risk of Bias tool for RCTs or the Newcastle-Ottawa scale for observational studies. This assessment helps to determine the quality and reliability of the evidence. Meta-analysis enhances the statistical power of individual studies by combining their results into a single estimate of effect. Effect size. Calculation. Meta-analyses calculate an effect size for each study, e.g. odds ratio, risk ratio, and then pool these estimates to provide an overall measure of effect. Heterogeneity assessment. Assessing heterogeneity, variability, among the included studies is critical for interpreting the results of a meta-analysis. Statistical methods like the I2 statistic and Cochrane's Q-test are used to quantify heterogeneity and determine whether it is appropriate to combine the study results. Sensitivity and subgroup analyses. Sensitivity analyses are performed to test the robustness of the meta-analysis results, while subgroup analyses explore differences in effect size based on study characteristics, e.g. population, intervention. Critical appraisal of systematic reviews and meta-analyses involves evaluating the following. Search and selection process. Assess the comprehensiveness of the search strategy and the appropriateness of the inclusion-exclusion criteria. Bias assessment. Examine how the review addressed potential biases in the included studies and the impact of these biases on the overall findings. Consistency and robustness. Evaluate the consistency of the findings across studies and the robustness of the results through sensitivity analyses and exploration of heterogeneity. Real-world evidence, RWE, refers to data collected from routine clinical practice including electronic health records, EHRs, insurance claims, patient registries, and other sources outside of controlled clinical trials. 
RWE studies provide insights into how treatments perform in everyday settings, offering valuable information that complements the findings from traditional clinical trials. RWE studies can be prospective or retrospective and include a variety of observational designs, such as cohort studies, case control studies, and cross-sectional studies. Common sources of RWE include EHRs, claims databases, patient registries, and surveys. These data sources provide large volumes of information on diverse patient populations, often reflecting real-world complexities, such as comorbidities and polypharmacy. The growing importance of RWE in regulatory decision-making. RWE is increasingly recognized as a valuable complement to traditional clinical trial data, particularly in the following contexts. Regulatory approvals. Regulatory agencies like the FDA and EMA are incorporating RWE into their decision-making processes, especially for post-approval studies, label expansions, and rare diseases where RCTs may be impractical. Health Technology Assessment, HTA. RWE is used in HTA to assess the effectiveness and cost-effectiveness of new interventions in real-world settings, helping payers and policymakers make informed decisions. Comparative Effectiveness Research, CER. RWE plays a critical role in CER, providing insights into how different treatments compare in terms of effectiveness, safety, and patient outcomes in real-world practice. Strengths and Limitations of RWE. Generalizability versus control. Strengths. Generalizability. RWE studies are highly generalizable as they reflect real-world populations, including those often excluded from RCTs, such as older adults, patients with comorbidities, and those taking multiple medications. Large sample sizes. RWE studies often involve large populations, providing robust data on treatment patterns, outcomes, and adverse events. Long-term outcomes. RWE studies can capture long-term outcomes and rare events that may not be observed in the shorter time frame of RCTs. Limitations. Lack of randomization. Without randomization, RWE studies are more susceptible to bias and confounding, making it difficult to establish causality. Data quality. The quality and completeness of real-world data can vary, with potential issues related to missing data, misclassification, and coding errors. Control over variables. Unlike RCTs, RWE studies have less control over variables, leading to greater potential for confounding and bias. Evaluating RWE studies. Addressing bias and confounding in real-world data. When appraising RWE studies, it is essential to assess how well the study design and analysis address potential biases and confounding factors. Look for the use of techniques like propensity score matching, stratification, and multivariable regression to control for confounders. Data quality. Evaluate the quality of the data sources, including the completeness and accuracy of the data, as well as how missing data were handled. Bias. Consider the potential for selection bias, e.g. healthier patients being more likely to receive a particular treatment, and information bias, e.g. inaccuracies in EHR coding. And before comparing the three types of research, meta-analysis, systematic reviews, and real-world evidence, let's understand the concept of generating evidence from real-world settings and why it is important. Real-world evidence, RWE, has gained prominence in recent years as an essential tool for evaluating medical interventions beyond the controlled environments of clinical trials. RWE is generated from data collected outside of randomized controlled trials, RCTs, capturing insights from everyday healthcare settings, such as electronic health records, EHRs, patient registries, claims data, and even patient-reported outcomes. This approach offers a broader understanding of how treatments perform in diverse real-world populations. So, what is real-world evidence? Real-world evidence refers to data derived from actual clinical practice, 
capturing information about patient outcomes, treatment effectiveness, and safety in a naturalistic setting. RWE is crucial for understanding how interventions perform across various patient demographics, comorbid conditions, and healthcare environments that are not typically represented in clinical trials. This evidence is especially valuable for post-market surveillance, health economics, and comparative effectiveness research. Let's now explore the differences between RWE, RCTs, and systematic reviews of RCTs. Study design and environment RWE involves observational studies that reflect real-world clinical practice. It captures data from diverse sources without the strict protocols of RCTs, making it more reflective of routine care settings. Examples include cohort studies, case control studies, and cross-sectional studies. RCTs, randomized controlled trials. Considered the gold standard for clinical research, RCTs use randomization to minimize bias and establish causality. Conducted in highly controlled environments, RCTs follow strict protocols to test specific hypotheses about treatment efficacy and safety. Systematic reviews of RCTs. These reviews synthesize data from multiple RCTs, providing a comprehensive analysis of the available evidence on a specific intervention. They employ rigorous methodologies to assess the quality of included studies and aggregate results to deliver a higher level of evidence. Population diversity and generalizability. WE provides insights into broader patient populations, including those with multiple comorbidities, varying ages, and other demographic factors that are often excluded from RCTs. This enhances the generalizability of findings, making RWE a valuable complement to traditional trials. RCTs often have strict inclusion and exclusion criteria that limit participation to a narrow homogeneous patient group. While this helps reduce confounding factors, it also limits the external validity and applicability of the findings to the general population. Systematic reviews of RCTs combine data from selected RCTs, but the population scope remains defined by the trials included, which may still lack representation of broader real-world populations. Control and randomization, RWE lacks the randomization and control inherent in RCTs, which can introduce bias and confounding factors. However, advanced statistical methods such as propensity score matching and regression analyses are used to mitigate these biases and adjust for confounders. RCTs use random assignment of participants to treatment or control groups, which helps eliminate selection bias and allows for a clearer assessment of causal relationships between interventions and outcomes. Systematic reviews of RCTs. The quality of these reviews depends on the rigor of the individual RCTs included. The aggregated results provide a high level of evidence, but are still constrained by the methodological limitations of the original studies. Outcome relevance and practicality. RWE offers valuable insights into outcomes that matter most in clinical practice such as long-term safety, adherence, and real-world effectiveness. It reflects the complexities of actual patient care, including variations in treatment adherence and healthcare delivery. RCTs focus primarily on efficacy under ideal conditions, often measuring surrogate endpoints rather than real-world clinical outcomes. This can sometimes limit the practical applicability of the results to routine healthcare settings. Systematic reviews of RCTs provide a comprehensive overview of efficacy and safety based on available trial data, but might not fully capture the everyday realities faced by clinicians and patients. Regulatory and decision-making impact RWE. Increasingly recognized by regulatory bodies like the FDA and EMA, RWE is used to support drug approvals, label expansions, and reimbursement decisions. Its role is particularly important for rare diseases, where RCTs are often impractical. RCTs remain the cornerstone for regulatory submissions and initial drug approvals, 
due to their ability to establish causality and meet stringent evidence requirements. Systematic reviews of RCTs often serve as a key resource for clinical guidelines and policymaking, synthesizing the highest level of evidence available to inform practice. So to summarize, real-world evidence plays a critical role in complementing traditional RCTs and systematic reviews by providing a more comprehensive view of treatment effects in real-world settings. While RCTs offer robust, controlled evidence of efficacy, RWE fills the gaps by capturing the complexities and variances of everyday clinical practice. Together, these evidence sources provide a balanced approach to understanding medical interventions, enhancing decision-making in healthcare, and improving patient outcomes. In conclusion, mastering the critical appraisal of meta-analyses, systematic reviews, and real-world evidence is essential for medical professionals. These research types not only contribute to academic knowledge, but also serve as powerful tools for making informed clinical decisions. So, by understanding and evaluating the quality of evidence, we can provide better patient care, ensuring that our decisions are based on the most reliable and up-to-date information. Additionally, our ability to critically assess research is crucial, not only for staying current with the latest scientific developments, but also for applying that knowledge in practical settings. This skill helps in identifying the most effective treatments, improving patient outcomes, and contributing to evidence-based medicine in real-world practice. Therefore, the insights gained from this tutorial will strengthen our ability to make sound, evidence-based clinical decisions, benefiting both your professional growth and the quality of care you provide. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next tutorial.